All right, nevertheless, um, just let me know so you can hear, hear me, LeBron, so we can continue, yeah? All right. So pretty much what I was saying is that um whenever anyone join, I'll just let them in. Um seeing that the meeting is recorded. So you have different roof material coverings again, asphalt, metal, uh, standing seam, concrete tile, uh, metal wood shake, concrete clear tile, and these would have been things that would have been common in America. Some of these. Um, you normally see this one out here. You also would see the metal. Uh, you don't often see the wood shake in Jamaica. So, advantage of the following shingles. Uh, they have they come in a different range of color style. Corrugated roof sheeting is normally the one we use in Jamaica and our cubs. So those would have been resistant to harsh weather and require low maintenance. Um, again, types of roof covering, asphalt shingles. These are most common type of roofing material. That's the one we normally see often. Metal roofing, clear, slate roofing, wood shingles or shakes. These are thing, these are types of roof covering that they might ask on the questions. So please pay attention to the questions. Again, you can make note from the the list that I have here to use towards your studying. This might be back on the paper. Now a stud partition wall, just like the the roof framing, the first thing you wanted to do was to measure and mark the desired location and dimension of the partition wall. So for example, first thing you want to do, I get the measurements. The wall will be from here to here. We need to make sure that the head is the same distance. Um, we would had the frame go right around. Um, install the sole and top plates. Uh, ensuring they are straight level, you know, using your different tools such as your spirit level, um, using the different hammer and nails to ensure that it's um, secured. Install vertical studs between the plates at regular interval, which will be these vertical studs. Those would have been the vertical studs right here. Um, Optionally install blocking, header, insulation, and vapor barrier as needed. Then attach the chosen wall finish. Finish the joint, apply paint with the desired wall finish. So again, measurements, make the head frame, Made the frame right around, install the vertical studs at the correct intervals, placing the nudgings between them. All right, so the next thing that I want to touch on was what is the purpose of the ridge board? The main purpose of the ridge board is to provide solid and stable point of attachment for the upper ends of the rafters or trusses of our roof. So for example, this is the ridge board, which will normally connect the different frame, the different frames around, connecting the common rafter, connecting the different rafters to it. So the ridge board, which will be the centerpiece right here, then the common rafters. Um, this is a truss, uh, truss that is set up on a roof. Uh, common rafter fixed to a wall plate. 
Now, this is the common rafter, and this is the wall plate, the wall plate which is here. They might ask you to draw the wall plate, and again, the wall plate is set up like this. This is the common drawing that you'll do in TD, showing where the rafter will be placed on top of the wall plate and the different things that they use to hold that rafter down to the wall plate. So again, practice drawing these. So when you go to the exam, you'll have it easy drawing. Always take a pencil to the examination room. Uh, I, do, I'm, I, I don't think they'll allow you to use a pencil to draw. More likely they'll ask you to use a pen to do the drawing. What is concrete? Simple, concrete is a mixture of sandstone and cement that have compressive strength, durability, and it's used on a number of different projects. Um, tools that we use to mix a batch of concrete depends on what we want to use, depends on where we are. In America, they normally use a concrete mixer, a chuck, or a little plant mixer to do the mixing. So we need a shovel to take the sand, to take the cement, to throw it in the mixture to give us concrete. Uh, again, concrete is a mixture of water, sand, stone, cement, while mortar is a mixture of cement and sand and water. All these are mixed based on the type of project. So, for example, they want to use more sand than cement. Uh, they want to use a 254. Just examples. So, let me be correct. A uh, 1, 2, 3 mix or a 1, 2, 4 mix. All depends on the number of sand and it's normally a ratio of sand, stone, cement. Now, when they mix concrete, they go through a number of different um, tests. What The test that is common, it will be the slum test. And these are the results from a slum test right here. So a slum test, the slum test measures the consistency and the workability of fresh concrete. So for example, when they mix concrete, they also want you to be using the concrete, not knowing the consistency and the workability of that concrete. So they put it to a test. And when they put it to a test, it gives you different readings. So it's a triangular, uh, a triangular thing they use to do the slum test. And if the concrete is positioned in a different era, for example, if it looks like this, it's called true slump. If it's like this, it's called sheer slump. If it's like this, which is down, it's called collapse and zero slump. So true slump, the concrete largely retains the cone shape, demonstrating that the mix is cohesive and its workability is too high. That means... The concrete mixture is too high for its uh, purpose. The, sheer, the zero slum, the concrete retains its shapes completely. Show that the mix is very dry. This kind of concrete is best used for road construction. So it dries right away. Shear slum is where the top half of the concrete subsidized dramatically, leaning to one side, meaning the mix has workability, but low cohesive. Co Cohesion, sorry, the mix bay have too much water content and can be retested after being amended. All right, and collapsed, the mixture doesn't return its shape at all, completely collapses. This means the water to cement ratio is too high and needs to be fully amended. So when you have one of the things that depend, a mixture depends on it, is its water to cement ratio. If that is off, oftentimes it means that it is a bad mixture. So are the mixture is poor. So they depend on the water to cement ratio because you don't want to add too much water and you don't want to add too much cement because meaning that you add a lot of cement don't mean the job is, is going to be better. Sometimes it have it, um, different side effects of having too much cement to the mixture. So compressive strength test, the, the compressive strength test is to perform to determine the strength of the hardened concrete. So they will use up, they will mix a batch of cement and put down that 
like they put it in a cup to dry just to give you not saying that's what they do but for example they get the cement that they mix and put it in a cup to dry then they put it under a machine and that machine press to see uh, when does it crack does it crack too quick does it take long to crack and that will determine if the mixture is good for the structure so foundations they might ask a question on foundation as to draw a strip foundation, draw a pad foundation, draw a pile foundation, or they give you a list and say to pick from it and draw. Uh, if you look at it, uh, the strip foundation would normally look something like this. Then you have the wall up here. So this is the common one that we see every day, the strip foundation. Then we have the raft, which as you can see, the shape here. And the raft, a raft is used when the soil is, has a low bearing capacity or poor stability. The low from the structure are distributed over a large area or there is need to reduce differential sediments or uneven sediments across the structure. So it's not a structure that is stable, right? That's when you use a rough foundation. The pile foundation would normally be used in places where a lot of sun, like in Dubai. So what they do is they create some piles like this. And say this is the area they want to build the house or structure. They take those piles and they push it down in the earth pile them up so that's when they build on top of it it doesn't sink below so that's pretty much the purpose of the pile foundation so let me read it pile foundation are implied when the soil near the ground surface is weak the structure is subjected to every vertical horizontal loads or there is mitigate the effects of ground conditions such as expansive soil or side liquefaction a pod foundation block a pod foundation block are, are utilized for smaller structures or individual columns when soil is stable so for example they normally look like this and they normally see like a dozen of them all up your building And then the building fall right and I get a beam and then the house on top. So those are so so all foundation, they don't just go and say, let me put a foundation here. So no. A lot of times foundations are placed based on the type of soil they're working with. Um whether we go to a rocky area, we have a slope, you have a step foundation where it looks something like uh this. Not that. Let me try again. Something like this. And the blocks would have been placed on different levels to meet each other right here. This is a block wall on the foundation here. So they have different foundations based on what they want to use. Again, uh, they might ask you to draw one of these. Be ready to draw one. Pile, pile rough you use a rough when by the soil surface is too weak and we have the deep strip where they go extra with the thickness from here to here and the strip foundation which is a common one that you see on every day today so again the step that i was talking about they have a step foundation. If there's a slope, they would normally put a step foundation. It looks something like this. Foundation, found, um, step, step, and that would be the layout. Uh, one of the questions that they might ask would be this question. To 
state some types of joint and how would you go about using or uh, what would you use those joints for? Mortis and tenant, half blind dovetail, uh, half lap, pocket joint, um, groove and tongue, which is a common one, um, basic butt joint. And these are all joints that we use based on what is it that you're trying to make. Um, normally, the tools that we use a chisel and a hammer, or should I say a mallet, and you use that to construct your, your, your groove to provide structural support or holding for your project. Uh, the common one I said before is normally tongue and groove, where you get your chisel, uh, you make your markings here, and you use your chisel to clean this area out, then you fit it together. Same for all of them. That would pretty much be what they want the joints to do. They might give you a table and to say, for example, they give you a table and say, I want you to tell me which joint would be suited for this table. Or they give you a, a table and say, which joint was used on this table? Those are the things that you want to think about when going to your exams. So I suggest that you do some additional readings on these type of joint um, while you go on your exam. So I'm going to cut the video here, upload this section so you can um, get it shortly.